Hi, and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this example, we wanted to determine the domain and range of a function actually just from looking at the graph. So for the example I've cooked up for this one, I have f of x equals a negative x plus 4 squared plus 4. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see exactly how I can use it to find my domain and range. Alright, so basically the shape of the graph is a parabola that opens down, and I know that because in my function I have a squared term. Now, when I want to start hunting down the domain and range, I want to start thinking of the inputs and the outputs that were used in this function. So first for the domain, I want to think of the inputs. Remember that these come from the x values used in the function. Now, in order to figure out what x values were used, I want to imagine, you know, what happens if I were to choose a point on this graph and trace it all the way back to the x-axis. You know, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this point right here and trace it all the way back to where it came from on the x-axis. So I can see that negative 4 was one input that was used in my domain. Now I could have chosen another point as well and traced it back to the x-axis. In fact, if I keep tracing back points from the graph all the way back to the x-axis, you can see that it really start to shade in that x-axis and start to cover it. Let's go ahead and shade in a, a few more and trace them back to the x-axis. Now, you want to make sure that these lines are nice and straight so that you can tell where they really did come from. And I'm only including a few, but essentially it includes all the points in between these arrows as well. There we go. So again, as I start to trace all of these back, you can kind of see that it starts to shade in the x-axis. Let's go ahead and let me use my blue marker to shade in exactly where I've traced it back to. So, so far it looks like our domain goes from, say, between negative 8 and up to 0. But one thing you want to notice is that I have little arrows down here at the bottom of my graph. This means that the graph actually keeps continuing on even further. Now, if I were to trace back these points, I can include even more of the x-axis. In fact, since these lines do go on forever, you end up tracing all of the x-axis. So what does that mean for our domain then? It means that I could have used any x value in the function and reached some point on the graph. Therefore I can say that my domain is between negative infinity all the way up to infinity. There we go. So basically this lists out all of the x values between negative infinity and infinity that I could use. Alright, now that works out pretty good for the domain. Let's go ahead and take a look at the range. Now, the range is much the same idea, only what we want to think of the outputs. Remember, these are going to come from the y values. So we're going to go through that same tracing process, but we're going to trace things back to the y-axis. So this point represents the output of 4. And I could have chosen something farther on down, maybe 3.5, 3. And a half, three. Of course, keep tracing back all of these points. I want to make sure that these lines are nice and horizontal so I can see exactly where they get traced back to. Now, you can see as I do this process, I start to shade in part of the y-axis. Let's go ahead and do a bunch more of these. There we go. Now, if I use my blue marker, so far, it looks like we have shaded from about 4 all the way down. Now note, I could have used these points from this side of the graph as well, but they end up going to just the same spots. Now also, since these arrows do extend the parabola down even further, I could keep shading in my y-axis even beyond what I have on the graph here. 
So it looks like I have all of these negative values all the way up to 4, but nothing above 4 because there's no graph here to trace back. Therefore, I can say that my range starts at negative infinity, all these negative values here, and goes all the way up to 4, and even includes 4, but doesn't go beyond that. There we go. So as you can see, if you have the graph of a function, it's just a matter of taking a, a, a step back and saying, all right, what inputs did it come from? That's our domain. And what are our outputs of the function? That's the range. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.